Our speaker, Sister Remtura, was born and raised in the Philippines. Her constant quest for the truth and the ill-fated predicament of her family, to name a few, has influenced her choices since high school. She pursued an associate diploma in business management through the aid of a scholarship program and at the same time worked in a local fast food chain. God simultaneously opened these two doors to sustain both her daily deeds and her schooling younger siblings. Later, God providentially unlocked another scholarship offered by her workplace which enabled her to pursue diplo a diploma in hospitality and restaurant management, or HR. To date, she earned no bachelor degree or no MA, no education degrees attached to her name. What a humble person. But she's hopeful that she still waits upon the Lord to move. All of her life, God made sure she's surrounded with prayerful people. Her encounters with his faithful ones drove her in search for true religion. It was in 2005 that she found the truth in an evangelistic crusade and gave her life to Jesus that same year. Accepted in the beloved and the school of Christ, God once put in her heart a desire to be prayer warrior in 2009. Fearfully, she began joining the BIC Women's Prayer Circle, and God sustains that prayer fire to this day by making her a part of global movement, 24-7 united prayer. Sister Ram is a nobody, only a fellow sinner also saved by the blood of the Lamb. And if you wish to know more about her, read the life of Mary Magdalene, Think of Martha and discover the story of Tabitha. If her life is to be summed up in a name, then it, it is Talitha Kumi. The Talitha Kumi in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. And the Talitha Kumi who was once dead and God raised to life. Brothers and sisters, let us hear the word of God through Sister Rem Torah. We're here because I was instructed by our media ministry. Happy Sabbath, family! All right. Praise the Lord for this special Sabbath uh, prepared by our women's ministry department. I, while worshiping since uh, the beginning of the program with you all and looking at every detail that the women of the church had prepared, it makes me look back at the time when I attended a tent-making mission seminar, and the pastor was, uh, we were, he was speaking, and then a decoration from the wall fell off, and he tried to fix it, just put the tape together and crum crumpled the tape together, and then he looked at me, and then he said, you know what, come here, you're a woman, you can tape this really neatly and nicely and tape it back on the wall. When women, when it's the woman of God putting the, the, the things together, you can, you can be sure that the details, the details are really neat, most especially if it's for the Lord. Amen? That's it. The, the woman of God, a partial, a partial character, a partial, uh, what do you call this? Uh, character of God. The woman of God. All right, tonight, let me see if this works. Okay. Tonight is a God prepared message. This is not mine. This is 
what he had prepared through the person of our sister from Singapore named Sister Linda May Linko. So tonight, we will just un unwrap this together. And I so believe that our prayers throughout the week, God has answered. The Holy Spirit is here, and He will all teach us tonight. And we will all together taste and learn the five spiritual benefits of prayer. And I believe that it's not limited to five. When you tap, tap to heaven's storehouse, would you agree that there is more than five? There's more than five. Who among us here? Before we dive in, let's have one more word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so, so much that you have put this confidence in our hearts that if we ask anything according to your will, you will hear us. It is your will that tonight be the beginning of a mighty revival here in this church, in this place. And we claim that tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone among us who, ha who, who has a lotus card? You know that, that green card, Tesco Lotus? Card, I, I, I'm not marketing the, the supermarket, but I'm just asking if any one of you has this kind of club card, a membership somewhere. Do you know how to use your club card? Do you know your privileges as members? We cannot just have the card and just make it a decoration in our wallet, right? And we cannot just have the card and we expect to receive the benefits that way. There are steps to take, there are hotlines to call, there are cards to activate, there are points to earn, there are vouchers to redeem, and sometimes clubs want you to attend something, events that they organize, so that you'd be able to receive the benefits. And I'm so glad, praise the Lord, that we God when you want to receive your privileges as his sons and daughters, there's really nothing much to do. Amen? Amen. We only need to present our cases to the Father, and he will receive us. Prayer is an important part of our life, especially as professed lovers of Jesus. Some of us spend hours on our knees, some of us just say a quick prayer before going to work, and that works. A Bible verse or two before work, before bedtime, before a meal. Is prayer just a daily religious ritual that we practice just because we are Christians? Have you ever thought of the spiritual benefits of prayer? There are far greater things. There are far greater benefits that we will all learn tonight, or at least refresh in our minds tonight. Prayer is life-changing. Prayer is life-changing if we make time for it. If we make time for it. According to the spirit of prophecy, prayer is one of the most essential duties. Without it, you cannot maintain a Christian walk. Christian walk. Because what does part of spirit of prophecy says? Prayer is the breath of the soul. Have you ever tried stop breathing? Just holding your breath. I was, when I was showering earlier today, the, the water was, for some reason, the water <laughs> was just too strong. The, the water current was just too strong from the shower. And I feel like I was drowning. I was not prepared to go to, the, to that shower. And I felt like almost drowning. Without prayer, we cannot make we cannot maintain a Christian walk. It elevates, it strengthens, it ennobles, it is the soul talking to God. Who among us here wants 
elevated, strengthened, and ennobled Christian life. Amen. Now let's look at the five benefits of prayer. And I'm sure um, there's much more, so much to take away tonight. Number one, prayer draws us closer to God. When we pray, we are talking to our Heavenly Father. He is always there to listen to everything we want to say to Him. He is our friend. And Spirit of Prophecy says, prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. Not that it is necessary in order for God to make known what we want to say, but in order to enable us to receive Him. Prayer does not bring God down to us. Prayer brings us up to Him. It says that good friends communicate. Good friends communicate frequently and at any time. We don't just talk to each other occasionally. It is the same with God. When we spend time to pray, we build a closer relationship with God, a closer relationship with our Heavenly Father, and we form a connection with Him. I recall many times Whenever I go to the supermarket, I would pick a produce and I would tell, I, I would not close my eyes. Like, I would look weird if I would be closing my eyes before a potato or an apple. But I would be just in my head, I'm holding the produce and I would be shooting up a prayer, Father, the money that I'm going to buy these potatoes are yours. So you don't want to waste your money don't you so please help me buy the good potatoes at a, at a good price help me buy good apples that are you know some apples would be when you cut it up it's not good inside and i've experienced it multiple times however good the outside was so i started praying about apples too lord please help me pick good apples so that none of your money would be wasted and that's uh, one way of how as a child of God, I open up to my father. There's one more story worth sharing with you. And it was when I was on the surgery table. Uh, when uh, we have to, I have to deliver Yona alive. <laughs> so I have prayed before, you know, when, you, uh, when I was being prepared for surgery. I kept praying, I kept praying. Pr friends are praying. Still... You know, that fear that I will be there and unconscious again for the end time. Uh, my fear was uncontrollable. It's overflowing. My body is shaking. And then the Lord made me remember that I can cry. I can cry with tears. I can cry to Him. I can call upon Him. And so I cried and I cried. I said, Father, deliver me from from this situation and I'm thinking of so many things but I started talking with him instead of just overthinking like being so paranoid with things I just started pouring it to, pouring it to him and then suddenly I realized I was singing a scripture song in my head the Isaiah 41 to Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will help thee. I will shield thee. I will uphold thee. And then he sent a doctor beside me, Dr. Nick Walters, to just tap me gently and audibly make me hear that he's praying for me. He said, don't worry. We know what we are doing. We will get through this. Do not fear, and I am praying for you. And that was so much comfort, so much comfort. This is one way that I connect to my God. I sing scripture songs in my head, and I claim his promises. There are many ways to connect to God, and prayer, talking to him, remember, 
draws us nearer to Him. Do you want to be really, really close to the Father? Do you want to really call God as your best friend? The Apostle Paul encourages us to let us draw near to God with a sincere heart. A sincere heart, the Lord never disappoints. Ellen White, in his admonition, says, the Lord has bidden us to draw nigh to Him. And when we do, He will draw nigh to us. He won't step back and shut us out. When we draw near to Him, He will draw near to us. So, women of God, He is bidding you. He is inviting you. It's time to pray. Benefit number two, it enable us, enables us to resist temptation. Jesus, to his disciples, said, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. At the same time, our brother Peter has a counsel telling us to be alert and of sober mind because your enemy, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion. But prayer keeps us alert. Through prayer, we can receive strength. Through prayer, we can say no to sin. And through prayer, we can ask God to make the right choices. I struggled with caffeine addiction not so long ago, but not coffee. It's matcha latte. <laughs> I was, I'm really struggling to share this testimony. I said, Lord, not that, please. But, okay, this is the example that he has brought to mind. Matcha latte. I, I got so uh, addicted to it, I would really look for it. And I con we, it was confirmed an addiction because my friend who has a medical background said, when I look for it and I don't have it, I shake. Yeah? So it's an addiction. Uh, I would get migraines if I saw it and I want it and I don't get it. So I am not proud of that at all. Uh, but I praise God for what he did. This is what he did. I decided I would give it up. I asked the Lord to help me to resist that temptation, to get rid of that. Because I had enough of its side effects. I had enough migraines. I had enough of it. So I, I came to the Lord, my deliverer. And I said, Father, I don't want to drink my latte anymore. Please uh, give me strength, give me power to overcome that uh, that surge when, when, when I see it and I want to buy it. So just talking to him as a friend. You know what the tempter did the following weeks after deciding that? Taubin was launched and it's right on our doorstep. I can easily <laughs> access it. But well, the longs, making the long story short, it's still an ongoing battle. But the absence of Taubin cups and whatever kind of cups, you name it, in our home is a testimony that every single time the enemy tempts me and every single time I prayed and asked God for, for victory, he had always won. My battle still continues, but continually I just kept I just keep running to God to be victorious over this matter. Praise the Lord. Spirit of prophecy indicates strongly that Christ is our only hope to fight temptation. We cannot at any point do it alone. She writes, Pray much. Prayer is the life of the soul. Prayer 
of faith is the weapon by which we may successfully resist every assault of the enemy. So, remember, if we want God to help us avoid temptations, then we should, we should also not only pray, but avoid the tempting situations, all right? Okay, so if any one of us here, men and women of God, who are, who, who's facing varied kinds of temptations, even to this day, I encourage you, it's time to pray. Benefit number three, prayer improves our mental health. Life today poses great deal of, a great deal of challenges, not only for us, but also for, for the young people. Many of us deal with stress, anxiety, worry, insecurity, and many are asking how to cope on situations like this. The Apostle Paul advises us, do not be anxious about anything. So what are we going to do? By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And so the peace of God, the peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds. Research supports this. Research supports what the Bible says. From a university called Baylor, they, they made a study, and this was the result. Prayer, attachment to God. Oh, that was the title of, the title of their study. But this was the result. They found that people who pray to a loving and protective God are less likely to experience anxiety-related disorders such as worry, fear, and so on and so forth. An article in Advent Health also supports this. Uh, it says there, Doctors who have studied the physiological effects of prayer have reported that when praying, heart rate and blood pressure decrease and breathing regulates. Pray, prayer reduces stress and promotes feelings of control and peace of mind. I want to pray now. I want those health benefits. But more than the health benefits, there is more. Praying for others, specifically, can be helpful in giving us calm and peaceful spirit. In dealing with, with mental issues like anxiety, de depression, or stress, when we intercede for others, we remove our attention from self, from the scene, and concentrate on just helping others through, through prayer. All of these studies and research uh, are just so true in my life. I have one more testimony to share with you tonight. I know you have to keep saving them because we'll have a short group dynamics at the end of, of uh, this presentation. So please save your testimonies as well. So what I'm going to share now is back through the pandemic. Through the pandemic, I didn't realize that I, I was one of those people who were also hit with depression and anxiety. But I really don't know. I thought it was just part of me to cry and be in the corner and want to be alone. But uh, just the, the workshops that I attended, that we attended post-pandemic confirmed, and the tests that I took confirmed the, the results that I had mild depression and anxiety back in the pandemic. But, he used, God used prayer to make sure that during that time, I was not centering on myself, I was not centering on my condition, but instead He used that time for me to pray for others. Not only praying for others, but He also um, made appointments where I will be involved so that I could intercede for others 
and with them break spells of darkness. One example, a friend in MVAT, a friend who attends MVAT, she's a member of BIC before. Who would know that she's suffer suffering depression, like severe depression? She would really want darkness and shuts herself from everyone. Who would know? Only God could arrange that. But just one day, God made me ask how was she, checked on her, so she told the way right away, her need to be visited. And uh, God sent us to her place with some of friends also. I don't know how to approach situations like that, so I brought some, some friends with me to help me to talk with her and cheer her on. It never ended in one day. It was uh, quite some time helping her. And through the course of that time that I was ministering to her, I was certain that I was going through the same, but only the mild, the mild uh, depression episodes. But God used that so that I... By praying for her, I would not center on my situation, but center on my, on my friend's situation. God made the same thing when during the pandemic also, he sent a friend's sister to come here to Bangkok. She came here to Bangkok to also escape the triggers of her depression in her country. That's why she went out of the country and tra decided to travel here. I am blessed that I have a very supportive husband because in all those situations, he's just very supportive um, and was right there. That, that woman, uh, she's a non-Christian, non-believer, believes nothing at all. We were able to invite her here at church and... Uh, God just made me realize her condition is much worse. Like her, her case of depression is much worse than, than mine. So yes, prayer is closely linked to better mental health. As we learn to really trust a loving father who can heal us and who, who can lead us through tough times. Prayer is a healing bomb. Who among us needs a healing bomb today? Woman of God, it's time to pray. Benefit number, we're down to benefit number four. We'll do this a uh, little faster. Prayer increases our thankfulness. The Apostle Paul here urges us to rejoice always and pray continually to give thanks in all circumstances. In all circumstances, gratitude in every situation. Ellen White here says, Nothing tends more to promote health of body and soul than does a spirit of gratitude and praise. If we are heaven-bound, how can we go as a band of mourners groaning and complaining all along the way to the Father's house? So if heaven is a happy place, let's practice heaven here and now. When we are joyful and thankful, we, inspire, we sing praises to the Lord, we inspire others to have that faith and to have that confidence as well. One of our sisters, when I was in the ICU, uh, visited me. I was, I, I, I had no idea that she came there. She was the only one who has access because she, uh, she, she's the, a doctor in that hospital. My family is not allowed to come in as well. But she told me the story that during the time that she visited and I was really unconscious, she visited, I faintly opened my eye, she held my hand, and she said, 
Rem, I am praying for you. We are praying for you. And she said that all I responded was faintly, praise God, praise God, praise God. And today recalling, recalling that instance and those days still makes me praise God. I praise God for training me to be thankful every single day, no matter the situation is, or no matter how challenging situations are. That daily, every single day, that daily training resulted into naturally explicating thankfulness and praises to Him. Even on times back that, ta back that time that I was unconscious of my words, if not for the patient training of the Lord, I don't know what would come out of my mouth. I don't know what would I say to my sister when during that instance. But I'm sure that all of God's people here right now and those watching are thankful people of God. But do you want a higher experience? Do you want to not just be stagnant on your Christian journey? Do you want to increase? Then, woman of God, it's time to... It's time to... Pray. Last, last of uh, the five benefits. Prayer develops a more Christ-like character. We are sinful beings, and we have the tendency to do evil. We are selfish. We are self-centered. That's why... Paul reminds us to do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. As followers of Christ, we want to become more like Him. And to become more like Him, aside from studying His words and beholding Him, we talk to Him. We talk to Him. At times, we may slip back in our old ways, but we need the power of the Holy Spirit to transform us daily, every single day, every single day. We, we pray and ask God to mold our characters. Paul summarizes Christ's, Christ's character in Galatians 5.22. To 23. The fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. That's Christ likeness. And, to, and, and these fruits of the Spirit are visible evidences of God's Spirit at work in a person's life. Not so long ago, if we have met, <laughs> If you have known me long, long ago, I am rough in speech, and I am careless in my speech until the Spirit changed me. Praise the Lord. Because there are these TV personalities that I would watch and get my brain absorbed, they subliminally are influencing me. I even use some lines to my husband. <laughs> But one day, he said, that's not funny anymore. You have to stop watching that TV show. And then I came to a point in my life that, yes, Lord, I want to change. Please change me. And so I thought, if what I behold, I become then I don't want to become that person that, that I watch. I want to become like Jesus. Therefore, I need to behold who? Jesus. So I began praying. I know it needs my cooperation. So I began practicing also to be gentle in speech and be thoughtful of every word, matching my prayers with an action plan. I dropped the TV shows as well. And he, he made me brave to clear 
are computer files also <laughs> with those shows that I watch. And God made me wiser in, the, in my choices with, with media and entertainment. It was an uphill battle in the beginning because it was innate in me to speak that way. But the Lord, again, never disappoints every effort, effort and prayer that are sincere. So one day, I received an affirmation from a brother or sister. That he speaks softly. <laughs> and then another, at another time, someone said, I, I overheard someone, you cannot upset her. You, you cannot hear her raising her voice when she gets upset. But deep inside, when I hear those, I praise the Lord. And I told myself, if you only knew the process, it was painful. If you only knew. But now, family, you know. And you can be conquerors too. Whatever it is that you want God to change in you, you can be changed too. What do you have to do? Women of God, you have to pray. We have to pray. To be like Jesus is not just to stop committing a sin that are obvious. It's not just stopping lying, cheating, gossiping, or thinking impure thoughts. To be like Jesus is to always seek the will of the Father. It is coming to that point to just, Father, I delight to do your will. I want to do your will. There are the five benefits of prayer. I, I cannot see the clock, but I wonder if we have five minutes, five minutes for our group dynamics, uh, not group dynamics, but here's what we are really praying throughout the week with 24-7 United Prayer that this special Women's International Day of Prayer be really a time of prayer. Now that we have learned the benefits, let's tap on it and really tap on it and see how it will make a difference in this church, in this house of the Lord. Now I have some guide questions here. Let's find a group, just three, okay? Let's go to the rules. Just three members in one group. And you will have a guide question. Please use your time wisely. We will only give you not 10 minutes, but just five minutes. Discuss and share. Open with a prayer. And then pray for one another. And then perhaps if the time allows, we would call one or two to share what they have experienced and talk about in your, in your group. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for what you have taught us tonight. Lord, we are excited to receive the benefits you have promised to us. We invite you continually on your spirit to teach us and be in our midst. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm going to distribute the questions now. Maybe our women could help also. Three members only per group because we have a limited time. So everyone can share. Thank you. Happy Sabbath.
circumstances in our lives testimonies perhaps as well but we know that time is not enough let's pray to have more of uh, fellowships like this in the coming days to to close what uh, has been to close what has been shared tonight I would highly suggest that we all look for this book it's entitled living the life of enoch the title again is living the life of enoch you can find it just google the title you can find the pdf uh, file print it and i guarantee that god has really blessed this uh, collection of spirit of prophecy and testimonies about Enoch's life, and you will all be inspired. Happy Sabbath, everyone.